Imagine living next door to a building that opened at 4am with men shouting and bustling about and your street choked with noisy traffic. Neighbours of the Metropolitan Meat Market had to put up with this six days a week for almost a hundred years. In its heyday, a stream of horse-drawn carts, and later lorries, arrived well before daylight, delivering carcasses to the 25 stall holders inside, as hundreds of buyers and sellers thronged the hall. One of the original managers said that a stranger would have been amazed at the deafening noise inside the building. The rattle and clatter of the lorries on the cobbled floor, the cries of the lumpers calling the wait to booking clerks, the bargaining between salesmen and customers, and not infrequently, a violent argument ending in a fight. And it got even noisier when married market couples returned from their honeymoon. They were serenaded with the banging of pots and tins through the hall and into the hotel, where the newlyweds could only stop the racket by shouting everyone free drinks. The company's founders wanted the market to look solid and respectable in an era when businesses came and went. The building included a bank, a saddlery, a shop and the hotel which offered commodious accommodation to country customers. In 1974, after 96 years, the market closed. Caught between the health department, who said the building had to be modernised, and the National Trust, who said it had to be preserved, Company Secretary Ronald Holmes said the market was the meat in the sandwich. For a while it was a car park, a trash and treasure market. For a long time it was a craft centre. These days, it's an arts venue and the hall is a performance space. Nowadays, it's easy to see what people might have overlooked amid the noise and the smell and the crowds. The elegance and grandeur of a building that was meant to impress.